This is Come and See with Father Philip Hall, turning to and following Christ in the 21st century. Father Philip is parish priest at All Saints of Lincolnshire Orthodox Church in Lincoln, England. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading Matthew chapter 9, verses 1 to 9. There are many people, in fact maybe the majority of people, think that living the religious life, life in Christ, life in God, the Trinity, is about snipping off parts of yourself so you live an ever more constricted and hidebound and closed in life. So you're hardly even alive at all. And certainly you see some people like that whose lives in Christ, so they think, get so sort of dreadful. They have all the life sucked out of them until they are almost a dried up stick and they barely seem to be alive at all. And certainly if you watch television, everybody who's religious on TV, in plays and films and shows and other things, are always just like that. Dried up, miserable, judgmental, vile people, the sort of people you would never want to have at a party with you, because you know very well that they squeeze all the life out of it until the party itself was quite dead. And speaking about all the life being squeezed out and being almost dead, in today's reading we have got a man who was filled with sin. Where the sin came from we don't know. The Lord doesn't say. Matthew doesn't say. The church tradition doesn't say. We don't know. But what we do know is this, that he was paralysed by it. He could not move. All the life had been squeezed out of him, not by religion, not by God, but by sin coming from Satan. And there he was, lying on a mat, on a sort of stretcher, and his friends, other people, had brought him to the Lord. The Lord sees their faith. He sees. He sees what it is they want. And what does he do? Does he judge? Does he destroy? Does he condemn? Does he say, you don't deserve life? Bang! Get rid of you. Does he squeeze out any last drop of hope or joy or fun? Does he squeeze the person still further so they're even more dead? Not a bit. That's not the way he is. That's not the way God is at all. Far from it. He says, my son, your sins are forgiven. Now there are lots of people around about who didn't like that idea. So who are you to forgive sins? It all went on in their own heads, but the Lord could hear them. Who are you to forgive sins? Only God can do that. And they didn't really want God to do it. But the Lord says, okay, you don't think I can forgive sins? Well, which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say to this man, take up your bed and go home? So he says to the man, take up your bed and go home. No terrible penance, no judgment, no condemnation. Your sins are, for are forgiven. Rise up to life. And the man is able to stand up. It's a resurrection. A resurrection from the death of sin. A resurrection from being overpowered by Satan. A resurrection from his old life that had led him to lie on this bed, utterly paralysed. A resurrection to stand before God himself. And the Lord's judgment is this, go home. Take up your stretcher and go home. And he did. No more sin, no more death. The Lord had wiped all that away. He had raised him from all of that. And now he has the possibility of living life to the full. I came, said the Lord, that you may have life 
and have it in abundance. Not only in terms of eternity, but the quality of life lived. That you live with God himself. God ever creative. God ever making something new. God ever purifying. God bringing life, real life, into each one of us. So that we are filled with joy and hope and love and the energies of God. That we can then do all those things that St Paul says in the other reading today. Go home, says the Lord. Go home. He says the same to you and I. Your sins are forgiven. Go home. We might well say, well, where is my home? Your home is with me, says the Lord. Go to your home. The day will come when that really is, is what the Lord will say. He'll say, you're dead. Stand up. Your sins are forgiven. Now, go home. Enter into paradise. Enter into life with me. He gladly wipes away sin. He gladly gets rid of the effect of evil. He gladly returns us to purity. He gladly raises us up and sends us home. God is not sitting there on a great cloud, thunderbolts in hand, waiting to strike you dead and send you to hell. There are plenty of people who think that God is even more enthusiastic than Satan is about sending you to hell. But God's enthusiasm, his divine wish, his divine will, his divine plan from eternity is to bring you to him, to have you nestling in his lap, to lie back across his chest as John the Evangelist did, to be with him in eternity. And for this reason, far from wanting to smash sinners to bits, the Lord wishes to forgive, to raise up and send us home. In your prayers, God bless you. Amen. Join us again next time for Come and See with Father Philip Hall, a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.